Well, like, because it's like an hourglass. Yeah. yeah. I was like, well, there it is. Hard. I'd be driving and I'd be fine. And then if I get back up. That's why I always wonder why when people were reading, you're just supposed to be your eyes. They kept moving their head like this. And now I find out. All right, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and get started here. We got one nice nice video to share. Everyone can see it. Can you guys uh, hear me on the call? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Perfect. So uh, this the uh, caption or the title of the video, thanks, Jim, for sending this over. Uh, it says, take the penalty. So this guy is not going to take that advice. So we'll watch here. Oh, he's <laughs> 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 so his, ball, his ball is, uh, it's hard to see. It's like right, right in front of him. That wasn't an island. <laughs> they don't, they're, they're, the audio is not on this because typically their they're guy is like laughing. Oh, they are laughing. Yeah. <laughs> That's his <laughs> It's not it's not over yet. That's definitely a uh, penalty area. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm sure. Just want to show one other video too. I've got. I actually have a couple videos today, which is nice. Um, and hopefully they work. I'm sure some of you may have seen this happen uh, recently. I just want. It's it's good to know that we're not alone in terms of rules fiascos. Oh, and unfortunately, there's no audio. One, two, three. Oh yeah, the five oh, yeah. step walk. Five. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, we need to have the audio. Can no you see the official under the hoop? No. Yeah. Where's, he goes to the hoop. Right? I need to get the audio. Is it? It's not the same without it. One and a half. Steps. Yeah. Well, what did he do? I don't see. Oh, no. He's 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 three steps. Three he's steps. Took it all fire <laughs> Oh, it's been so three as far as I know. It's a step and a half. Yeah. That's what it's yeah. It's one and a half, right. isn't it? No. Yeah, it's, no, half. it's two and a half, isn't it? No, it's one and a half. One and a half Four. is traveling. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't get the audio, but the, the audio is good because Greg Kelser is in the background saying, you think we have a travel here? Heck yeah, we got a travel here. <laughs> um, but actually, the... Uh, the uh, NBA officials came out and said it actually wasn't a travel because he lost control. <laughs> and I mean, you ask anyone that says, that, is this a travel? Uh, yes, that's a travel, but he lost control. control. That's what the ref said. But, but, that would, but, so, and, the, and this is exactly what, um, and the, the, the point that I wanted to bring up from having this on here was that, you know, sometimes the way that the rules are written, aren't necessarily make you know they don't make much sense because you see that and and that's why people complain and that's why that's why a lot of the rules changes have happened because that's what golf rules used to be like something stupid like that happened but the rules are written, written a certain way and it's it's going to be the same thing with with ricky we saw a couple weeks ago i guarantee you in two years that's that's not going to be a penalty because they're going to it's going to be the same kind of public outcry as like rewrite the rules to make it so that's common sense um, so, it, but it's it, it's good to know that uh, there's other sports other than golf that are having rules issues and have dumb rules <laughs> like we do. If Ricky had any common sense, he went back to where he was before. Yeah. Right. Instead of trying to take a drop yeah, out of the show ball. Right. Well, I don't know. He did a pretty good chip shot up there. Well, he did. After he went in the and water. Then, well, so, and say. then it just trickled, trickled, trickled all the way down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have done that over That's again. what I wrote to me. Well, that's what I said. He hit another grab shot in the water. 
I like it. I like his <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, I do too. <laughs> when he says this guy a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, rule rule ten. We're starting out today, so that hopefully there's uh, been some discussions about parts of rule ten in terms of interpretations that recently came to us from the USGA. So we're going to cover that and uh, you know what that means for what's currently in the book and how uh, some pictures in the book are no longer accurate, uh, or at least that's my interpretation of their interpretation. And, and so now uh, we're, we're going to cover that, but we're going to start with basically uh, rule 10 is preparing for making, preparing for and making a stroke, advice and help, and then caddies as well. So the, the purpose statement, again, rule covers how to prepare for and make a stroke, including advice and others. <laughs> Go green. Go white. <laughs> any, any, yeah. Anyone? All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, including advice and other help that the player may get from others, including caddies. Uh, the underlying principle is that golf is a game of skill and personal challenge. So again, there's some things that, in terms of that, that are changing, lining up players is something that the USA and RNA feel strongly that the player themselves should do and not get help from, from others. All right, so making a stroke. So how, how we make a stroke and several acts that are prohibited in doing so, a, a stroke is made by fairly striking at the ball with the head of a club. And then again, the way that the USGA and RNA define the fundamental challenge is to direct and control the movement of the entire club by freely swinging the club without anchoring it. So this anchoring, uh, I believe 2016, I want to say, uh, was, this is, uh, everything doesn't seem to be working now, there we go. Um, so I think 2016 they came out with, with an anchoring guide and uh, that, th that's been in play ever since. And uh, now with, with the, obviously the uh, rewrite of the book, now it's, it's in there um, as well, continuing on that, that same theme that you know, we're not, the, the, the player needs to make that stroke um, and, and not get any support from an artificial device or some kind of anchoring point to make it easier. And again, same thing, we can't push, scrape, or scoop the ball. So if we got, if the ball is up against an out-of-bounds fence, there's going to be very limited strokes that can actually do that. We can't necessarily put the ball or the club head right behind the ball and just move it forward and assume that that's going to be a stroke because at that point we're really scooping it or pushing it and not really hitting the ball. And then this is a change here. So if the player's club accidentally hits the ball more than once, uh, there's only one stroke and there's no penalty. So previously we had a two stroke, or we had a penalty, one stroke and then a penalty stroke if there was a double hit. Um, and again, this is accidental. Has anybody gotten the video on the internet that's virtually viral where there's a woman behind a tree? Oh, yeah. yeah. She does a Nicholson image. So actually, she made a stroke to hit the ball and get it in the air. Yeah. Then when she hit it like a baseball, the ball was moving. So she's made two strokes and gets a two-stroke penalty because it wasn't an accident. So now she's up there in four when she could have probably been on the green chipping out and hitting on. She's yeah. actually made two complete strokes and she gets a penalty for hitting a moving ball. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I read it uh, two strokes, and then you got to estimate where, where the what ball would have gone. I think that's. I think that's correct. I think we're actually going to cover that today. That right? I, th I think you're right. I, I think your reading is correct on that. Is it in an interpretation? It's it's in it's in eleven. Uh, but we'll okay. we'll we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so Jim 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 the 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 a video that he's referencing is basically a player playing around the around the tree and saying that oh I like this new double hit rule. Again, it is accidental, so it really applies more to bad golfers and not ones with good hand eye coordination. <laughs> um, or I, I said, right. if you're good enough to do that, you're good enough not to be behind that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You should be. Unfortunately, the converse is true, too. Right. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure that that was at least the third or fourth take that, that she made to get it around there. If she got on the first try, uh, good for her, but she probably you know, missed a few times before that. But again, it is accidental if we do have a double hit. Um, it also applies to when a player hits, or if the ball hits a player's 
equipment or the player themselves. So if you're in a bunker, you hit the lip of the bunker and it comes back and hits you. Previously, that was a penalty. Now it's not a penalty. We're just going to play it as it lies. Uh, but at, again, it has to be accidental. So if you stick your leg out to prevent it from going in the water or something like that, then that's a different story. You still have the injury. Right, yes. Uh -huh. So if you were hitting the ball to the green and your cart is on the other side of the green and hit it and it hit your cart, that used to be a penalty, but now it's not. As long as you didn't put the cart there on purpose because you knew that, you know, I'm just going to leave this as the backstop. Right, right, right. <laughs> but yes, if, if it was accidental, then, that, then that's not a problem. All right, and then so anchoring the club here. So um, the, the way, the easy way to understand anchoring is, is that obviously a player can't anchor, but it really, it, it really comes down to where there, there's two things that it has to be at a certain certain part of, of the body can anchor, and then also the position of the hands. So we'll, there's a picture in the in the book um, on page 84 that really is clear clear and cut on 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 what that what anchoring is. So I think I have it or in here. Or 147 in the big book. Right. So basically on the left here we have what's what's allowed. So we can we can have our body touching, touch or we can have our hands touching our body in this in this picture up in the top left. They're resting up against the, the leg. Um, but that's fine because the arms or the hands are together. Once we have an issue is when we get the hands that are apart. Then, then we can't have it resting up against against our our body. And same same here. And, and then it also, I guess, it also it, it it matters too. Uh, the anchoring needs to be below the um, elbow. So in this case here, we have it we have it tied to the forearm here, which is below the elbow the the elbow. But in this case, where we have it anchored, even though our hands are together, we have it anchored to our stomach, which is not allowed. So it's not necessarily prohibited to have it a quote-unquote anchor point. It just that anchor point has to be below the below the elbow. And so we'll show you a video of another um, situation where this anchoring is is allowed in a sec. Um, and then obviously here we have in this bottom left is the normal stance with a long putter, but there's no anchoring at that top part. So it's removed away from, from the body. And you see a lot of people on the on this uh, Champions Tour that still putt like such. I think Bernhard Longer is still putting like that, right? And you can't tell if his hands are against his body. <laughs> right. 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 Practice stroke and his actual stroke. Yeah. Right. It's close, but obviously they're they're not calling him out on it. He's been he's been winning too much money for them not to have certainty that that he's not anchoring or that he yeah. yeah. So oh, they asked him and he said he wasn't. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Supposed to be better than better here. So here's uh, I think some of you have probably seen this video before, but uh, this this was something put together by. Uh, Steve Scott, who was lost a tiger in the 1999 USAM or something, not, not 1999, 1996 maybe, whatever that's, year that's it was. not Pelosi giving Trump uh, lessons? I don't think so. And I, this audio is not working again, but we'll see the video. But basically, after we see this um, ad about Watson, um, but in the in the video, will it'll show an example of anchoring that's allowed, and unfortunately, I can't get the audio to work. Um, but basically, what he does is he's just clamping his 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 arm or his wrist, and that's serving as an anchor point, and that's that's still okay. So here, so here's a better picture of it. It has a bandage of some sort. And so he's got it anchored up against his forearm, like a lot of players do. Matt Kuchar does. Uh, I think Bubba is now doing this as well. But he's he added a second component to it, where he's going to really clamp 
clamp it together, but again, it's below the left, the, the elbow, so it's allowed. And the arms are swinging freely. Correct. So we'll see if he ever makes a stroke with that here. <laughs> he likes to talk. <laughs> He might he might be the the head guy for Fox now that he's in it left. I don't know because he 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 did some U.S. You know, USGA events for Fox. Uh, I'm not sure who they hired, but come on, come on, Steve. <laughs> Anytime now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And so that that is that that is allowed. Under on, on, that's not that's not anchoring because again it's below the 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 elbow is how it's defined. Okay, and then this and this one here, um, a common carryover from the the old rules as well is that while standing across or the old term was a stride. Uh, the player cannot make a stance from or make a stroke from a stance with a foot deliberately placed on each side of or with the, with either foot deliberately touching the line of play or an extension of that line behind the ball. Um, however, there there's there's an exception that if they're doing it to avoid standing on someone else's line, which is common, you'll you'll have a weird stance and tap in or something like that. That's that's okay. There's no penalty there. But they can't, um, you know, putt side straddle or anything like that. This is really just the same sneak. You know, right. Late right. in his golfing life, he had the yips and eventually cured it by putting as if he were a croquet player. And like the anchoring, they didn't like that. So about the only time this comes up is if somebody was trying to do it the same sneak way and putt like they had a croquet mallet. He ended up with a side saddle anyway. Yeah, he did. But so he, did he did it a different putt. Yeah. Point is, right? It's, it's very, it's it's very, it, it it doesn't happen much, if if at all. But didn't you say that it included reasonable distance so that you couldn't stay with your foot? <coughs> so, so, so it says that the for this rule only, the line of play does not include a reasonable distance on either side. So basically, it's just saying that you can't stand on your. Exact line, but if you're yeah. off to the side a little bit, it's okay. If you're going to camp in, camp in. Right, right. Okay, uh, 10, 10 10.1D, playing a moving ball. So a player must not make a stroke at a moving ball. That seems logical to do. Um, a ball in play is moving when it is not at rest in a spot. If a ball that has come to rest is wobbling or oscillating, but stays on or returns to its original spot, it's treated to have... To, as being at rest and not a moving ball. So if you're on the putting green and the wind was blowing and your ball was oscillating back and forth, you're still okay to putt that ball and it wouldn't be considered hitting a moving ball, which can happen depending on you know how, how low the greens are cut and how windy it is out there. But there's a few exceptions. So um, we talked about this last week, that if your ball begins to move after you begin your backswing, and you make the stroke, that's okay. There's there's no penalty there, and you can hit that moving ball. Um, if your ball is falling off a tee, we talked about this last week as well and a couple weeks ago, you can continue to make that stroke and hit it. There's no penalty there. And then if your ball is moving in water, if you want that extra challenge for the game of golf to hit it while it's moving um, in water, you're okay, and there's no penalty for that. I'm not sure why people would want to do that, but um, it's an option. All right, but then in, in either case, um, you must not delay play. So, you know, if, if your ball is, is uh, sitting there and oscillating, you can't wait for forever to, to stop oscillating. You're going to have to continue to play on and not delay, delay play. Or in the same case, if you're waiting, if your ball is in a certain spot in the in the in the stream, um, and you're waiting for it to to go down, and then it will possibly move out and get closer to the hole or whatever, uh, you know, you can't wait for that too. It's kind of like the old like putt putt thing where sometimes the ball goes in a stream and then comes out another way and comes closer to the hole. You can't necessarily wait for that to happen. Where are you playing putt putt? 
I don't know, all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This can get brutal here in about 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so, uh, so now we're going to move to advice and other help, and this is where we're going to get into what was uh, has been talked about in the last week or so. But again, for this rule, the fundamental challenge is for the player to decide the strategy and tactics for his or her own play. Um, and there are, so there are limits to the advice and other help the player may get during the round. So during the round, the player must not give advice to anyone in the competition who's playing on the course or ask anyone for advice other than their, their caddy or in the team event, their partner or their partner's caddy. And then also the player must not touch another player's equipment to learn information. So if they want to find out what, what club they're hitting on a par three, they can't go up to the other player's bag and move the clubs around to see it. But if the clubs are set up so that they can see that information, they can still look into that player's bag to gather that information if, they, if they'd like. And then this does not apply before round or while play is suspended or between rounds in a, in a competition. Okay, so the question was 10.1D, does it only apply to stroke play? And so that, that's actually going to apply to, to both um, stroke, stroke play and match, and match play for 10.1D. Going back to that. Did you have a... Yeah, there, the yeah. big book again, page 150. Um, what happens if the player's getting unsolicited advice? Which could be, for example, for a stop it. walking along the mountain. And the answer is you've got to do your best to try and stop them. And if they don't stop, you get the general penalty. And that could very well happen at some of our events, Lots for sure. Of our events. Definitely, definitely. Back to the 10.1D, it's loss of hold. It's a general general penalty. Um, which were so for everybody. Just lost so it's so it, yeah, so it, it'd be gen, general penalty, two strokes and stroke play or loss of hole match play. Yeah. Hey Kyle. <clears throat> um when I was in uh, the rules class yeah, in twenty, every time it's it's going to say general penalty. That's that, that's one change they made is that they now just call it the general penalty instead of spelling out two strokes or um, right, right, yeah. correct. Is that a definition? General, general penalty? penalty. I think it is actually. <laughs> definition. Yeah. General penalty is two strokes. Or loss of hold in match play. Yeah. But so. there's an earlier rule where they made it a point to say that this is a match adjustment penalty. What does it happen to a previous Well, yeah. it's, well it's, it's, you would go back and adjust yeah, the match rather than the adjust. It. That's for the, the, the clubs. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, well, that's, that, that's a unique situation. Yeah. Right. But anytime, so if you look at the definition, page 205 in the small book, it says general penalty loss of hole in match play or two penalty strokes and stroke play. So that they're just putting general penalty as opposed to um, two strokes. And we're doing the same thing on some of our entry forms or some of our wording to players. Uh, for example, like distance measuring devices, uh, instead of saying two strokes, we're just using the term general penalty because in match play, it could mean, if it, the event's a combo match play, stroke play, the general penalty covers us is that it's a loss of hole and, and match and two strokes and, and stroke. Right, Craig? Right. Wait, How's Craig, on top of this? Um, welcome back. You <laughs> woke him up. All right. We're just in some measuring device. So we're going to have events. If you, if you, it. if you use if you use it when you're not allowed or if you use like slope or something like that. Sorry, okay. I should have been more clear on that. Yeah. But that, that's just a, an example. If, you're, if you used it to get slope, first time, general penalty, second time, DQ. DQ. Mm -hmm. But instead of saying two strokes, it, we're just using the term general penalty because that covers both. And the DQ applies to both stroke and match. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then again, this this last section here it just says, and, and when you have partners, um, you know, your that advice now you can get from your partner or your partner's caddy as well. So anyone on your side, you can get advice from. So when you're picking your partner, make sure you pick someone that has a good caddy. <laughs> someone with a bad handicap and a good caddy. Fuck. <laughs> All right, so what, so what exactly is advice? So it's any verbal comment, it's the definition, any verbal comment or action such as showing what club was just used to make a stroke that is intended to influence a player in choosing a club, making a stroke, or deciding, deciding how to play during the round. So any information that could help them with those three things is going to be deemed advice. But advice does not include public information, such as the location of things on the course. So if you're, if someone's playing with another player who's never played before, they can say, oh, this hole is a dog leg left. That's, that's okay, it's just the location of the hole, or that tree out there is 200 yards um, away from the tee here. That's, that's general information that, that's um, available to the public. And again, we just hear, Things on the course, such as the hole, the putting green, the fairway, and penalty areas, bunkers, or another player's ball. And then the distance from one point to the other, or information on the rules. But if you ask for help from someone on the rules, better make sure that they tell you the right thing, unless it's one of us. If, if we tell them the wrong thing, they're, they're good. But if another player tells them the wrong thing, then they've got to live with, with the uh, consequences of, of whatever they're told if they follow it blindly. The assault huh? And the assault charge. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, ten. Ten point two. So now we're going to get into uh, some of the fun stuff here. So pointing out line of play for a ball anywhere except on a putting green. So a player may have his or her line of play pointed out by having his or her caddy or any other person stand on or close to the player's line to show where it is. But that person must move away before the stroke is made. So. This has always been the case. We have a, a situation where you have a blind shot over a hill. You can have your caddy or someone go up to the top of the hill and say, I'm, I'm in line with you in the flag now, but before you hit the shot, um, you need that person needs to move out of the way. And actually, before you take your stance, that person needs to move out of the way as well. And then you can also put a, a towel or an object down, but again, that needs to get removed before before you play. So you couldn't have your caddy go up there on the top of the hill, leave, leave the towel there, and then come back. They need to remove that towel as well. And then we have a slight, excuse me, yeah. where the example you just gave about somebody in, up ahead of you, where does it suggest you can't, you have, they have to move before he takes a stance? This is before the stroke is made. So I think in four, 10.24. That's behind the player. Behind the player. I don't think it does, does it? 152. It just says, you're right. So it's, it's, only, it's only behind the ball. Because it clearly says behind. Line of play behind the ball. So, so yeah. So what I said about the stance is not correct. So as long as they move before the stroke is before, made, you're before up, you make the stroke, correct. Showing somebody where the correct. line is. Correct. Yeah, the stance is only when they're behind the ball, not not necessarily on the line of play. Whether right. it's so it's only behind. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, so a slight slight change uh, now on the green, though. There's a few things that we we're able to do that we weren't able to before. Caddies or other people were able to weren't um, able to. Do. So now, before uh, the strokes made, uh, the player can have either the player can can touch their their line um, or have that line indicated to them, um, and they can do that with their hand, their foot, or anything that they're holding. So flag stick. So I think in one of the US AMs in, in the 90s, there was a, a player that their caddy touched the green with the flag with the tip of the flag stick and got a penalty for that. Now that's no longer a penalty. Uh, they get that but provide but they need to move before the stroke is made again. So and that goes with the player as well. So previously player would go up about halfway between their ball and the hole and hover their putter over the ground. 
Um, now they don't need to worry about that. They can put their putter on the ground and don't have to worry about touching their line because that's that's okay. But um, it, we'll talk about this when when and if we get to the, the putting greens. But we're we're also we need to make sure that we're not taking in, in a ton of time doing this. Um, so we still need to not undo delay or unreasonably delay play. Um, so we're not out there taking 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. We still have the same amount of time that we're going to allow per our pace of play policy per, per shot to happen. Even though there are these, these things that people can do now on the green. And I'm assuming that's why they've removed a line, line of play stops at the hole. That's gone completely because it doesn't matter now. Right. Okay. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So now there's no longer a line of putt. It's just a line of play. And and yeah. Right. <clears throat> they do say that the line of play could extend beyond the hole, depending on you know, the situation. Say you've got a player chipping onto a onto, the, onto a green, and he wants to use a backstop and have a roll back. I mean, so it really depends on the kind of shot the player is going to make. So they, I think they don't say it stops. No, it's no they longer. It's open, kind of an open. It's no longer in the definition, so it's right. gone. Right. Yeah. So it depends really what the player intends to make the stroke. Okay, <clears throat> clarify that for me. Now, if I'm off the green, uh, let's say I've hit, I hit, I my ball was in a bunker on the west side of the green. I scull it over to the east side of the green. Um, and my caddy is over raking the bunker where I originally came from. Can he stand in a line? Now I'm playing my next shot. Can my caddy stand in line with the, the flag stick while I putt or chip or whatever my next stroke is going to be? Yeah, the interpretation say yes as long as he's doing it innocent. No, no. I'm, well, not I'm saying he's not doing it. Oh, well, he's he's deliberate. He can't be deliberately standing. <laughs> he accidentally, he's there. So the line of play does extend beyond yeah. the hole in that case. Yeah, I mean, it will. That's what we were saying. I thought that we were saying it ended at the hole. Where does it say well, he it, can't? It, 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 okay, so, 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 here's, so here's what line of play says the line of the definition the line where the player intends his or her ball yeah. to go after a stroke, including the area on that line that is a reasonable distance up above the ground and on either side of that line. So if you're if you are not intending for that to go to go beyond where, where that where your caddy was, I don't think I don't think we have an issue there. I would right? Agree. Yeah, I would agree with that. The only time you'd have an issue is if you place him there, because then it says you can't put a mark anywhere, and that would include so you the caddy's okay. foot. If he's or, done raking the the bunker and he just has to just stands behind I the, think it's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, unless he's specifically he's being used to line you up. Right. And then unless he, he before yeah. you take the stroke. Right. Unless he yelled over, hey line, you know my right foot hit at me or whatever. Right yeah. Right. And then and then at that point he'd have to move. Then it becomes a little right. Yeah, it's something like having your caddy attend the flag. You can have your caddy attend the flag and say don't move and then aim at their foot. But you can't say, put your foot here. Right. And then, I mean, that's a subtle difference, but there is the distinction. So you can, you, you can have a caddy that you stand there? The caddy just oh, holds the flag right. and nobody's right. directed them. Then you can say, don't right. move. Okay. Just stand exactly, and then like aim at their right foot. Okay. When I tell them to move to the other side of the hole, am I? That's okay. That's, that's okay. That's, that's, that's real positioning. Is. Right? That's okay as because long as you don't tell him that's you're playing at his foot. If you're just putting him over there because that happens to be break and you're trying to find how or far, his or how his shadow is falling yeah, across exactly. the hole. As long as you don't explicitly tell him that. It's not a deliberate act by definition. Right. Yeah, that's covered under the exception of exception for number two there. Right. And, last and again, paragraph. this is this is yeah, it's, well, it's 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 on the green too. So we make sure that's clear. It's we're talking about on the green here, not you know, elsewhere on the course. In in an example of hey, stay there. It's uh, it's we're talking about on the green. 
But that last paragraph says, while the stroke is being made, the caddy must not deliberately stand in a location on or close to the line of play or anything else, such as pointing out a, pointing out a spot on the putting green or point out the line of play. So and he's can't, standing on a uh, two point out the line of play. So basically what, what that's saying is that the caddy can't, can't be on uh, attending the flag and then say aim at my right foot. Once, once he says that he needs to move or, or she needs to move, but he can stand there and, and, that, and that's fine, but he can't, or she can't say aim at my right foot, but they could say aim a foot outside left of the hole and be okay. So they they just can't use any any physical spot or marker, right? Exception: the caddy may stand in a location on or close to the player's line of play to attend the flag stick. Right. If he doesn't have the flag stick, he can't be standing around. Well, no. If he's close enough to touch yeah. it, then it counts as a ten. Right. These kinds of I'm things gonna, really aren't going to come into play much for us <laughs> unless we're refereeing a match play. Because typically, when we're on a, a trouble hole, we're in the middle of fairway. <coughs> we don't get involved very much with any of the ball the play. Yeah, well, we I, will I, come, come in a match play. In match play, yeah. Came yeah. in last year the Michigan Hammer. Mm -hmm. so right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, <laughs> it, 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 I, I think the, the, the easiest way to understand it is that as long as the caddy isn't saying, aim at my right foot when they're standing, they can still attend the flag and be there. Um, and instead of saying aim at my right foot, they just need to say <coughs> aim a foot out from, you know, from the hole, from the right edge or whatever, and they're fine. But they can't purposely stand in a place and say aim at this place. Or purposely put something on the, on the, the other side of the green and say aim at that water bottle or aim at your bag or whatever. And again, it all comes down to what what the the intent was. It just accidental, or was it was it done deliberately? And a lot of these situations we're talking about is that it's done deliberately. Kyle, yeah. The last time we talked about this rule, we were talking about a player who like, they got the penalty because the caddy had moved away when she went to take her stance, and and somebody said, well, but if she'd have backed away and then come back, she wouldn't have got the penalty. But that's only on the green. It says. That a player takes the stance in breach of this rule, he or she cannot avoid the penalty by backing away. So she would have got the penalty no matter what, right? That was, that was true 14 days ago. So um, what's the change? So we're we're, we're going to get to that in a second okay. here. So we're we're, we're almost there. Um, so <laughs> ten point two B. Um, we've oh, got. I'm not reading that. <laughs> we've, so we we just talked about this. No setting down an object to help in taking the stand. So this includes you know by the player. But one of the things that was okay previously with the rules was you could lay down a club to line yourself up. Now that's no longer the case. So now if you do lay down a club um, on the ground to line you up, it's going to be a penalty. So previously that was allowed. You couldn't do with a alignment rod, but you could do use you previously could have put a club down. Now not 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 the case. Okay, but then this is just what it says here is that if the player takes a stance and does this, he or she can avoid penalty by Picking, picking up the club and backing away and, and taking taking their stance. There's no penalty. Excuse me. This is that's that change is likely to be a problem or could very well be a problem. Putting a club, I mean, players all the time try and line themselves up, put put a club down, look at it. I mean, right. It's a fairly was a fairly common mm -hmm. practice. <clears throat> right. I think it, but right, and I think that's that's a, it's a subtle change that not a lot of people are talking about. Right. Well, the big book says if you're talking about putting a club head down perpendicular to the line of play and then walking around to hit it, the big no, book no. says you yes. can do this. Right. No, I'm talking about laying a club at your feet to see yeah, if no, they're lined up. And right. You can't lay at your feet once you, if you're taking a stance or anything. If, if you, but you used to. You know, yeah, right. But mm -hmm. if, if you lie it down now, right, <laughs> up on the ground, to, to point out a direction, of play and you walk around behind it as long as you haven't assumed a stance right as long as it's very clearly yeah, says it's a, it's you know, a, if, you, if you back away 
and then remove you must not take the stains. Right. This right. So you could lay the plumb on the ground, walk around to see that line of play, but you couldn't take the stains. Right. Correct. Yeah. So I, I sorry, I, I misread this. It's it's cannot. So you cannot avoid a penalty once once you take the stance, as you're saying. Right. So once they take the stance, they're done. That's it. Does this apply to that putter that stands by itself when you get too many to it up? No, there's no. I think that's okay, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Seems. Yeah, there's actually a the nuance the over after that putter. Yeah. Self standing. Yeah, yeah. 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 stands by itself. I, I'm confused. Right? I am confused with what you just said. The putter. No, with putting a club down and walking or laying a club down and then walking around behind it. I didn't know you could ever do that when you were playing. Sure. You sure. Could. You, could. Sure. Yeah. Huh. you used to be able to. <laughs> but See, now you're saying I can lay a club down, just throw it down, mm -hmm. walk back here, look, line myself up, somehow go and pick that club up and then as take long my you haven't taken your stand. Yep. It says, that's what it that's says. What it says. exactly what it says. As long as you haven't taken any stands. Uh, page 86, page 86, number three, page 80. That's, that's where it says you can do that. I, I, player must not take a stance for the stroke using any object that can set down by or for the player to help in lining up his or her feet or body, such as a club. I, then why does that say it says you can put well it says you can put the thing down but you can't take a stance yeah, right. so it's a, it's a combo combo act you have to, you have to do both to get the to get the stance and breach of each rule the stance is it, it, with the club in play the stance is the breach mm -hmm. right as long as you don't take a stance with that club laying on the ground to indicate your line of play it's just a visual. So you're suggesting the second sentence there is the one that identifies that you can yep. do it. You can do it. Yep. So you could look from behind. You just could You just can't take your stance before you pick it up. what you just said. Correct. You can. You can lay it down to to, to indicate where you're going to play. But as soon as you go around and take a stance there, then then you're going to get the penalty. Can go for both clubs and. But you can go around behind. I, and yeah, sight any, with any that. Object. Exactly. Yes. You can sight down the club this way. Use that over the side like you're assuming the stands. Right. The big book, and I, this should control, right? But the big book and the interpretation says that this subsection does not allow a player to set down an object, such as an alignment rod or golf club, to help the player take a stance. Now, so while it's not in the big mm -hmm. rule, this language would seem to indicate you just can't, you can't still do can't it. do it. But let me but, see that. But they're trying to tell us officiate out of the little book. What page is but that? One fifty one. You actually take your stance. No, no, but this this doesn't say that. This says to help the player. Why are you putting it on the ground? Right. To help you take a stance. Or which one are line. you reading? Ten two B three. Very bottom of one fifty one. Bottom, Chief. This there. first first sentence. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that does say you can't do it. It says you can. So what are we? Who knows? Because the little book is supposed to be controlling. Where are you, Jim? Page 151, mm -hmm. there's okay. under the gray, which yeah. is the rule, there's the, the bolded oh, I see. and then it's the next sentence under that. I know why it's it doesn't really conflict. If you look at the title, it says no setting down object to help in taking stance, but it implies that you can put it down as long as you're not then taking your stance. They're not. Why the person down if it wasn't taking your stance? No. Why else would you put it on the ground? Uh, what it's direction are you? Just, just to line up my shot. My plane. That has, that's not the same as taking your stance. So I think, yeah, these are not in conflict. You were lining up to the left of what we thought of as the line. I think 
She's talking about this alignment A L. Yeah. Read the next paragraph. It's complicated and controversial. The alignment rules. Yeah, I, I, I think I think let's let's. Uh, I mean, you read the rules or just Voice's opinion. I want to see one says club head, not club club head. That's the next paragraph. That's the next paragraph. It's about the prohibition. Yeah, I, th I, I think, I mean, ultimately, I think the question is, if you put a club down, is that, I mean, what, I guess the question we're asking here is, I mean, how, how is that, what, what, what is the situation where you have put a club down or a line rod down that wouldn't, that wouldn't be helping you take your stance? I um, mean, it could just be, I guess, to indicate where you want to play, but I think if you're really putting the club down, you're, I, I don't know, I, I I think it is helping you take your stance. Well, there is a difference between putting it down to get an alignment for whatever and putting it down for taking your stance. I agree. Because your stance is yeah. going to be getting into position to hit the ball. Okay, but now you're taking, you're, you're using it as an alignment aid to tell you which direction okay. you want to play or Right. Which so, so direction, you know, you yeah. want to miss. See, some of so you better right golfers, yeah. you better golfers are thinking stance is important. Some of us just want to know direction. in what, what direction, direction am I going? Right, okay. <laughs> what direction? So, 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 Lynn, basically, you're, 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 you're my caddy. You lay a club down and say, you need to aim in that direction. Right. Yeah. Where, where it's pointing. Yeah. yeah. This is, that's what we and do. That, and that's, you stand and that's, there and say, and which way okay. am I going? Okay, that's okay. aim at that okay. tree. Okay. Aim at that. You could put a stick down and say, okay, follow the line yeah. out to right. the tree. So instead of going like but, this, like standing next to and going like this, do you can just say, oh, there, I'm going to lay a club down yep. and point it out. Yeah. It's, it's That's what it's saying, Visually, right? Mm -hmm. It's the saying, hit at the corner of the tower. <laughs> it is. Do you think paragraph right there says it's okay? <laughs> I, that, I, get cool. I get what they're saying. I get what they're saying. Where are you now? <laughs> Page 151. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. The same says, no setting down objects to help in taking stance. When I put a club down, it is not helping me take a stance. It's just telling me where I'm going. And that's not helping take a stance? No. Now, if, you're, if you're coming this up says, to the side the and thinking says, about where you're going to put your feet, you're not thinking make about a, lining up your stance. stance but you're standing there. For the stroke using any object that was set down by or for the player to help in lining up his or her feet or body, such as a club set down on the ground to show the line of play. But again, the first part but of I don't know why so. else you, right. now we've covered everything. I think, I think, line okay. of play, <laughs> body, I, feet, everything. What, what the hell else, so. and why else would you throw your club on the ground? I think, okay, so, so let's, say, let's, let's, just I think. Think. let's just imagine a conversation that a caddy has with a player on the tee, okay? It's a, it's a dog leg. They're going to stand there on the tee, and with their arm, they're going to say, okay, you need to aim at this, this tee right there. Imagine that, or, or, or this tree out in the distance, or whatever. What they're, what they're just saying is that if you put something on the ground to point out that spot that the caddy's saying aim at, it's okay. It's not, it's not, it's not helping them line up their feet to the line, right? As long as they don't step in. Right, exactly. As long, as long as they don't go in and take their stance on that line, they can put it down to indicate where where the heck they're gonna go but it's not that's not helping them take their stance per se it's just saying just just like the caddy would in the t aim on aim at the short tree that's two you know <laughs> yeah, feet i from agree the with you on this the way they worded that non-decision <laughs> right, yeah right because it says the line of play, which right. would be what I would do it for, but right. not to help me with my stance, but right. my line, right. of play. line of play. But they make that a forbidden thing there. Yeah. Sounds like it to me. I agree. I never see. We ought to throw this book out. Lay a club down and then oh. go, the caddy go pick the club up after you told the guy what to do. It's the player throwing the clubs down, usually. I've never seen anyone do it. So, where, so is it different than here than it is in the other? Yep. I've, I've done this. this thing. I guess it goes back to intent and deliberate. No, really not, because it, uh, that language in the big book is a part of the bolded language in the rule. No, it's the one above it that Lee is talking about. 
But again, the first that part of the sentence doesn't change. Right? A player must not take a stance for the stroke using any object that has been set out. Right. He's not taking the stance. Right. I think I think that's correct. Correct. I mean that. I mean that's the way I would interpret it, is that that first part of the sentence is very important. It's very it's very important. The, the other stuff is important as well, but it, it has to be the, the stance has to be taken. It's not. I, it's, I, it's a it's it's a it's an and not an or, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Says, if you do take your stance, you can't uh, you can't eliminate. I'm just trying to get us on to to be to be <laughs> for. <laughs> I mean that's that's the way I read it. I don't know. I I read it as that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry. Close the door. This one that gets hardy. <laughs> read the words is what they say. Don't, don't read into the words. Write the words exactly what they say. That's my advice. All right. Well, well, sorry, we'll get, basically, it says you're not supposed to do it that show the line of play in three. And the line of play, what else is that except for where do I want the ball to go? Right, I mean, but but it's also it's also saying that the player must not take a stance. Right. So I I I think we need to get further clarification or read more into it. We'll we'll worry about that and get an answer out to you guys because highlighted change is part of the. Well, it's 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 definitely a change that you can't you can't put it down, right? I mean, that's that's for sure change. Right. You're gonna get it clarified. Yeah, well, I'll reach out to the USA like I have for the other things, and I'm still waiting three weeks later Glad for a response. So, straighten right. that out. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, now, now we're gonna get to to ten here, which is the the big the big one that uh, has come up here. Or, or sorry, ten ten two B four. So caddy restriction on caddy standing behind the player. So um, as we all thought we knew, um, when this player begins taking a stance for the stroke and until a stroke is made, the player's caddy must not deliberately stand in a location on or close to an extension of the line of play behind the ball for any reason. If the player takes a stance and breach, he or she uh, can avoid penalty by backing away and changing that on the fly here, even though it says cannot. Um, and again, this exception here is supposed to be only on the putting green, but this clarification now is just taking this exception on the putting green and applying it everywhere on the course. So this picture here in the book, on page 87, uh, the left side is still good, but you can just put a big X through the right side. Because, um, now we're... Well, but the player hasn't taken their stance on the one you want us to cross out. He started. He started. That's what That's the start. Yeah, that's the start. Yeah, that's the start. Yep. First step. Okay. So first step when they start to take their stance. So basically, I'm going to go to the interpretation that the USGA has come out with. <laughs> so this is the clarification that came out. This is the clarification. Correct. So... Meaning of begins taking a stance for the stroke. So rule 10.2b4 does not allow a player to have his or her caddy deliberately stand on or close to an extension on the line of play behind the ball for any reason when a player begins taking a stance for the stroke. Reference to the stroke means a stroke that is actually made. So the player begins to take the stance for the stroke that is actually made when he or she has at least one foot in position for that stance. So again, as soon as they have one, Put in that's going to define their stance in the final position correct in the final position so it, it's really once you take that first step and your foot comes into position where it's going to be yeah or very very close to where it's yeah. going to be you can obviously <laughs> do a little wiggling we're still going to count that is that that first yeah. part part where you're going to be and then if a player but if a player backs away from the stance he or she is not taking the stance for the stroke that's actually made so basically what we're saying is that any time at any point on the, co on the course, if the caddy's back there, they can just back off and retake their stance. As long as the caddy moves out of the way, they're good to go. There's no penalty. So previously it was the exception on the putting green. Now it's the exception everywhere. <coughs> and I think that's the easiest way to, to understand it. 
And the further clarification is that uh, when a caddy is not deliberately standing um, behind the ball when the player begins taking her stance. So we saw, maybe some of you saw this a couple weeks ago, Ricky's caddy was sitting there messing with the yardage book and Ricky went and took a stance and the caddy like jumped out of the way like because yeah. he thought he was going to get a penalty. Now this is just saying that, um, that the, the rule does not allow a player to have his or her caddy <coughs> deliberately standing um, but if the, the, the term deliberately requires the caddy to be aware that the player is beginning to take their stance for the stroke to be played and he or she is standing on or close to the extension of line of play behind the ball. So if the caddy is unaware of either of these two things, the caddy's action is not deliberate and the player won't be penalized for that. So a couple of exa examples of when the caddy's action is not considered deliberate, when the caddy is raking a bunker or taking some similar action to care for the course and is not aware that he or she is doing so on or close to an extension of the line of play. The player makes a stroke and the ball comes to rest near the hole and the player walks up and taps the ball into the hole while the caddy is unaware he or she is standing on or close to an extension of the line of play. Uh, the caddy is standing on an extension, an, an extension of the line of play behind the ball, but when the player moves in to begin the, taking a stance, the caddy is facing away from the player or looking in a different direction and is unaware the player has begun to take their stance. Or the caddy is engaged in a, in, in a task such as obtaining yardage and is unaware that the player has begun to take a stance. And so that last one is what happened to Ricky's caddy. He was trying to figure out the number with his yardage book and then he looked up and Ricky had started taking a stance. Well, in that case, he's just, he's just gonna be okay to be on the line, but he needs to move obviously before he makes his throw. Do all of those issues associated with the caddy then come into effect if it's your playing partner? partner. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be the same. So the, the so it's caddy it's, or it's partner. The, the caddy or the partner. Or the part or partner's caddy, caddy or yeah. a, an okay. advice giver in a team competition. It's all going to fall under that. Characterization. If you're playing in a match play and it's a, it's, a, it's a team match play and I'm putting first, my partner can't stand behind me to watch the line of the putt. If he's in a similar line at work on the other side of the hole or anything like that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, Which is very common. That, that's the, yeah. the four ball when you got your player and his partner. You know, so that's the same thing as right now he's like a caddy. You know, the same discussions for caddy are associated with that situation. That one. Yeah. Where does it say on the other side of the hole? Or is it just because the line of play extends beyond the hole now? Where does it say your partner can't stand on the other side of the hole? I know he can't oh, stand yeah. behind. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it could be on the other side of the hole. It's not behind. That's what I'm, that's right. the way it used to be. So, no, it's not both sides. John? Well, the alignment rule is for the caddy standing behind you, but you're, they can't stand behind the hole while you make the stroke if it's pointing out your line of play. Yeah, no, that's what I'm not, I'm talking about in four ball, your partner can't stand behind you when you're making the stroke, but where does it say you can't stand on the other side of the hole on your line of play? Um, uh, you used to be able to. I think he still can. He's not allowed to stand there if he's, if he's pointing out your line for play. No, right. he's not doing that. He's standing there because he wants to see how your putt's going to go. Because <laughs> his, 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 that'd be fine in that case, right, John? So well, I mean, it, it gets back to this deliberate, right? right. If, he, if he's standing there pointing out a line for you to play, it's against the rules. He's not pointing, he's he's not pointing anything. He might it. not even even be looking when you're stroking the ball. And once you've stroked it, he's gonna look over his shoulder. He's, he's just watching. He's watching. Yeah, he's, he's not pointing, he's just watching. And this, I think, has always been misunderstood by players, except the really savvy ones, knew they couldn't stand behind their partner and they'd go exactly opposite, 180 degrees, and stand over there. And as long as I don't say, hey, Joe, go stand there, I think we're fine. So, so my partner can't stand behind me. Right. I see him back there. You can't stand behind me. I'm going to watch the putt. But 
on the other side of the hole. Oh, I wouldn't do that. No, no. He's got to know it on the way to the course. You got to tell him on the way to the course. <laughs> you can't say something nice. Don't say anything at all. Yeah. Well, Kyle, it, the language is in ten dot two b two. No. Well, you're not setting your partner down over there. He's just wandering over there by himself, so it's legal. Two. Or it's the it's general penalty. It wasn't that ball, but not on the other ball. Kyle? Yes. Um, I got a question about the stance in the fairway. Let's say the caddy is behind him, lines him up, moves away. He re he retakes his stance. Can the caddy come back and do it again if he doesn't like the way his player set up? Is it or you just get one one chance? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I, basically, I, the caddy could move away, watch his player line up, and say, "Oh my God, he's not lined <laughs> up at all," and then come back in. Have him retake a stand or walk away from the ball. Say, I didn't like the way you lined up, and then walk away again and have the player reset. Is that intent or? <laughs> I think that'd be okay. Um, why, why, Kyle? That's intentionally aiding the player in taking his stance. Right, but it, on the other token, you're not breaking a rule, quote unquote, unless you say intent. You're right. I mean, I don't. Where, you got the clock where is on? it? I was gonna say it's something. Yeah, I, I guess, John, John, where where does it say that they can't they can't line them up anymore? Because I mean, it. I I, I was trying to find that same scenario, and I can't. I, I I couldn't find it where they said they can't do it. It just says that if you do, if it does happen, then they need to move out. And as long as they take their stance, um, again, without the help, they they'd be okay. But I, I mean, I don't know. You you you've, you've read it as well. <sighs> Because I feel your pain. That's what I thought <laughs> initially was that, okay, yeah, like this, 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 this the rule change is basically saying that you still can't line the player up, but I, but I can't see anywhere where it says that. And I mean, that's, that's the way I think it should be, but I, I'm not, I'm not sure where, where it's at that says that you can't line the player up. Well, I, I guess if you, if, if you were standing behind, if the caddy were standing behind the player and said, you're not lined up right. Wouldn't that be advice? Right, but yeah, yeah. So you, you could get advice from caddies. So I, but but the general purpose, the fundamental challenge is to direct and control the movement of the entire club. Oh, I'm sorry, the ah, no, it, okay. it it's the alignment one. I okay. purpose of the alignment one. I, I don't know. I, I really think the USGA has, has I mean, with this, with this thing, they, they really just essentially taken, taken out the rule that they were trying to put in place is that they just said, well, it's going to be okay now as long as you back off. I, I don't see anywhere where it says you can't line the player up now. Well, what I mean, what they were used to do is that caddy stayed behind that player until their feet were in the – and everything was perfect. And then they'd say, okay, and walk away. So they really weren't lining themselves up. But if the caddy lines you up and walks away before you take your stance, then you're still technically having to line yourself up, even though they've told you basically where to be. Right. But, I mean, Mike's, Mike's question was saying is that basically the, the, the caddy can still uh, – Mike, Mike Church's question was – on that first attempt, the caddy can still can still basically line the player up, and then if if they're good, then the, the player just backs off and retakes their stance. If they're if they're way off, then the caddy says you're way off, and then they and they back off and take their stance. So they're still they're still technically lining the player up. Right. And I and, and Mike, I, I I think it's a good question, and I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know the, the right answer, but I think the answer is that uh, you know yes the the. The caddy can line this the player up in that sense as long as they there's no penalty as long as they back off and retake their stance, and there and, and there's no exception to how many times 
Oh. That that was cleared up by Mark um, last November, Mark Wilson, with yeah. On the Green. Right. And I would imagine that that same principle is going to apply anywhere on the course. Well, and like Lee said, eventually it's going to become a slow play issue. So, Well, then you got to undo, undo delay. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. I think we should just tell players they can't line people up and the caddy can't stand there and, and, and then if they want to actually learn the rules themselves they can they can learn about it. We'll just we'll just rip out rule ten. Yeah. <laughs> actually actually we can just give them the book the way it is because it's because it's wrong. And, and, That's right. And they'll not know any difference. So I yeah, think yeah. it's unreadable. <laughs> So, so Kyle, if you go to the last paragraph of this, it, it explains what they intend, but I don't think their language has really helped clear that up. Right. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. All right, so this one, let's see here. Maybe this will. So this was another one that was added. Um, alignment help before the players begin taking their stance for stroke. Uh, it explains that the primary purpose of rule 10.2 D4 is to ensure that aiming at the intended target is the challenge, uh, is a challenge that the player must overcome alone. In a situation where a player has not yet begun to take his or her stance for the stroke, but the player's feet or body are close to a position where useful guidance on aiming would be given, or could be given, and the caddy is deliberately standing on or close to an extension of the line of play behind the ball, the player is treated uh, as having begun to take the stance for the stroke, even though his or her feet are not in that position. And only if the caddy gives the player help with, with the liner. The alignment help is given, but the player backs away before making the stroke and the caddy moves out from behind the line of play, there is no breach of the rule. And this applies anywhere on the course. So <clears throat> I think that pretty much answers our question, I guess. Yeah. Um, and alignment, I guess. Taking a firm stand. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just leaving the possibility out there, you know? <laughs> alignment helps includes when the caddy gives help by standing behind the player and moving away without saying anything, but by doing feet. so is giving a signal to the player that he or she has correctly aimed at the intended target. Their feet are firmly planted in midair. Yes. Are, are you going to be taking our conditions of competition to a binary before we start testing them out? I don't know. Craig, Craig uh, just Craig know the answer. He bailed. Yeah. He bailed. But, but basically, I, th I think you know, what it's saying here is that as long as the player backs off, uh, or as long as the caddy moves away and the player backs off, it's going to be fine. But that that last part there is is uh, important, and just saying that the caddy, you know, the caddy can't, you know, just make a, a nonverbal um, cue as well. If if they stand back there and they're lining them up and they don't say anything, they move out of the way. The player is still going to have to to back off in that case. So they can't they can't circumvent the rule by just having an un kind of Unwritten, unwritten communication or say, if I don't say anything, you're good, type deal. All right. Sure. <laughs> Let's, I just, I just canceled all the events that, I, that involve caddies in my schedule. So. <laughs> Except in a four ball. <laughs> All the ones with partners, yeah, they're out too. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. All right, uh, ten point two B other help number five here. So physical help um, and protection from the elements. So this is still the same. So a player cannot get uh, physical help from his or her caddy uh, or protection from the sunlight, rain, wind, or other elements. And it's, it's while uh, the player must not make a stroke while this is happening. So common example is that we'll see it's raining out. The caddy holds the umbrella over the player while they're taking practice putts or, pra or practice strokes. And then before the player actually puts the ball, they'll move the umbrella away. That's, that's okay. But if they kept it up while the player was putting, then we're going to have an issue. Unless you're Obama. <laughs> 
Or as a picture of Moses uh, holding an umbrella over his or her head. <laughs> do you, you want to? Do you want to clarify? No, it's a marine. One of the green. He gave a speech. He had a holding umbrella. Oh, so gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> he wasn't putting though, so he's. So I, I guess. I guess he was all right. <laughs> all right. So you um, can. But Hold again, but again, but, but yeah. So this last part is saying that the player themselves could could hold hold the umbrella over their own head while while putting or, or playing, and there'd be no penalty there. But they can't accept help from someone else. And likewise, they couldn't if the sun was in their eyes or something like that. They couldn't have their caddy stand in a spot where they were protecting them from the sunlight rays that were coming in. Um, if the caddy just happened to be there and it was an accident and it did that, then that's okay. Um, but they can't, they can't purposely uh, or deliberately, in this case here, uh, have that person positioned. It's a good caddy, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. Do they have to do they have to replay the stroke if that occurs, even though they got a general penalty? No, they're just going to get the general penalty. The two strokes or loss a hole, and the and the stroke will count. Thank you. Yep. All right, caddies. We've been talking about them, so let's. Uh, so obviously, we we know the reason for having a caddy. Um, yeah, I know, right? Uh, but you know, this, we thought we did. This uh, last sentence here is interesting. The the, the uh, player is responsible for the caddy's actions uh, during the round, and will get a penalty if the caddy breaches the rules. So I guess be careful when you're picking your caddy, and you'll probably get what you pay for. Um, He's the former caddy. Huh? I am. All right. All right. Um, so someone who a caddy. This is the, the definition. Someone who helps a player during the round, including in these ways: carrying, transporting, or handling clubs. Person who carries, transports, such as by cart or trolley or push cart, um, hand, or handles the player's clubs during play is the player's caddy, even if not named as the caddy by the player, except when it's done to move the player's clubs, bag, or cart out of the way or as a courtesy, such as getting the club left behind. So just because I, you know, someone's, um, you know, Lynn's bag is in the way and I have my caddy move his bag, that doesn't make my caddy Lynn's caddy. He's just moving it out of my way and that's, and that's fine. And then uh, giving advice. So a player's caddy is the only person other than the partner of the partner's caddy that a player may ask for advice the exception of in a team competition, there could an advice giver can be given permission to give advice. Um, but, and then a caddy uh, can also help the player in other ways allowed by the rules. All right, let's see, it was a word. Yeah, so Chris, we, we need to, we're, we're actually looking, uh, it's a good question. The question was about, uh, you know, scrambles and, and how that applies. We're actually looking into that for our own game scramble that we run. So um, we'll, 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 we'll get back to you on that, on, on the answer to that. But I, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it is not 100% clear um, how it applies in certain different, different unique forms of play. All right, so, so players are allowed to have one caddy at a time, uh, but player must not have, the, the player must not have more than one caddy, um, and the player cannot change caddies uh, temporarily for the sole purpose of getting advice from a new caddy. So they can't, uh, you know, if their, if their swing goes haywire, they can't switch to a new caddy who's their swing coach to help them with that. Um, if the if their caddy that they are using had to leave and the and the swing coach is there to caddy and that's the only person available then that's fine but they can't can't have it be the sole reason why that they're switching to a new caddy and whether or not the player has a caddy any person who walks or rides along with the player who carries other things for the player such as a rain suit umbrella or food or drink is not the player's caddy unless he or she is named um, as such by the player or also carries transports or handles the player's club. So if we're at a junior event and mom or dad is carrying the umbrella and the rain jacket, they're not the caddy for that player, even though they're carrying the player's equipment, so to speak.
All right, if two or more players share a caddy, this not doesn't happen a ton, but um, if it does, the caddy's action w was taken, um, and, and we need to decide who's who's uh, w w which player the action was taken for. The caddy's action was taken at the specific direction of one of the players, then the action was taken for that player. So if Gene and I are sharing a caddy, and Gene says, uh, you know, go over there and grab that, grab something for me, and then something happens, it's gonna it's gonna impact Gene, not necessarily me because that caddy was acting on Gene's, um, act, on Gene's advice or, or demands or whatever you want to call it. And then if none of the players are spe specifically directed to action, the action is treated as taken for the player sharing the caddy whose ball was involved. So if the caddy just goes and is a rogue caddy and just does whatever they want, if it <laughs> involves your ball, you're, you're going to be on the hook for that. And then in the committee's procedures book, there's a, the committee can limit or require certain restrictions on caddies. So a common example is for the U.S. junior and U.S. girls junior, they prohibit parents from being caddies. So that, that's something that the committee can do and that you'll see at our events that we, or qualifiers that we conduct. Kyle, they haven't changed the fact that a, com a player in a competition, when he finishes play, can go caddy for a friend. Oh, that's still there. That's still there. You can still do that. Okay. Correct. Yes. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> that happens a bunch of times. In mm -hmm. fact, they've got another example where, for some reason, somebody gets sick. Person goes in a caddy. Now, I have to go reread right. it. Right. Yeah, but no, that. that that would be okay as long as they're not, as they're not currently playing on the course. Um, they, they can, you know, I, I would hope that they're currently playing on the course. They, no, they, they wouldn't want to caddy for someone else. No. If they did, they'd, they'd be playing pretty bad. It happens all the time in the net tournaments. Oh, yeah. yeah. After they get done, they go out and caddy because there aren't too many caddies out there, you know. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then for this, uh, for a breach of, of uh, you know having more than more than one caddy or uh, doing some of the things that we talked about here in 10.3, um, it's going to be a general penalty for each hole during which he or she is helped. So this is a, a change. Um, I believe this used to be limited to a set a set number of times per per round. Um, and I believe it was also a match adjustment. Now it's just a general penalty, so no match adjustment for this. And then if it does happen between the play of two holes, the player gets the general penalty for the next hole. If you had two caddies for 18 holes, then that's add 36. Right. And hopefully you, you don't have to pay both of them. Or, the or, you, or you, you lost uh, 10 and 8. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I only got an extension on that breach uh, in the conditions of uh, four ball. Essentially, you get advice from your own caddy. You can't get advice from the caddies of a partner. If I read that literally. No, uh, no, you, just, no, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you yeah. can. Your, you can, your team. When you read that rule literally. Partners can. Well, the, they explained to us in class all of these first. 20 rules are written from the perspective of a single player. And so all the conditions that specifically apply in partnership formats are covered in, in the rules 21 to 23. All right. Thank you. All right. So what, what a caddy may do. So action is always allowed. Caddy may carry, transport, handle clubs. Search for the player's ball, and if they move it, okay. Now, no penalty. Put it back as long as there it was accident. It was accident. Excuse me. While they were searching for the ball, uh, they can give information, advice, or help before the stroke is made. Smooth bunkers or take actions to care for the course, with a few exceptions um, on that. So they can't do do so to improve the player's next shot or a current current shot coming up right and then uh, remove sand and loose soil and repair damage on the putting green remove or attend the flag stick 
Uh, and this is a change here. Mark the spot of the player's ball and lift and place the ball on the putting green. Uh, they no longer need the authorization to, to do that. They can freely do that without the player's authorization. And this change uh, was really due because in other parts of the world, this is common that the caddy is well ahead and basically gets there, marks all the balls, cleans all of them, and puts them back so that when the players get up there, they're ready to putt and move on. And this was, to, again, to help pace of play uh, for those for those situations. And obviously, a player or caddy can clean the ball and remove loose impediments or removable obstructions. Okay. So um, actions allowed only with the player's authorization. So restore conditions that were worsened after the player's ball came to rest. Uh, when the player's ball is anywhere except in the putting green, lift the player's ball under a rule requiring it to be replaced or after the player has decided to take relief under the rule. So that situation that happened, um, I, I guess it's still this, but I think it was at a web.com event last winter, or maybe two winters ago, where the caddy went in and grabbed the ball out, out, of, the, out of the water, or the, the old lateral water hazard. Um, <laughs> the, the, caddy, the caddy still needs to get authorization from the player to remove the ball from, from the penalty area. They can't go in there and grab it, um, with the exception. Uh, and I, I don't. I'd have to look and see. But um, the the old rule was if it was clear, if it was clearly unreasonable for them to play it, it was okay. I don't know about the new rules. So um, I don't know, John. Do you do you know on that one if if that same wording is in is in there for the new new rules? Uh, no, I, I, I'm not sure what, what's there. Okay. I, I, yeah, but I think you're right. I don't think they changed. I thought they only changed it on the green. But. Right. All right. Well, well I mean, if, if, it, if it is different, we'll, we'll let you know. Well, uh, it's we'll, over on the top, page 90. Under actions not allowed, the caddy can't decide to take relief under unpliable or abnormal ground condition or penalty area. Therefore, he's got to wait until the player. Right, okay. All right, so uh, as Gina's saying, uh, action's not allowed, so the, the caddy cannot concede the next stroke or a hole or a match or agree with the opponent on the match score. That has to be done by the player or partner in four ball. Uh, and then deliberately stand on or close to an extension of the line of play behind the player's ball when the, the player begins taking a stance um, for the stroke and until the stroke is made. This takes us back to the extension of line of play. Apparently, we can, can't we infer from this that if they meant extension of line of play, they put the language in? It says they, extension they of the it. line of play behind the ball. Right, but right. they didn't have that language. We yes, they talking, did. Oh, did they have it before? No, no, I mean, oh, in this in, in 10, when we were talking earlier today, that language, extension of line of play, wasn't there. It, it, it was. It, it, I think it, oh, maybe it didn't say extension, but it. Line of play was there. Right. Yes. Hey. Yeah. On, the player's caddy must not deliberately stand in a location on or close to an extension of the line of play behind the ball. Yeah, so it's Here's the, the same. Line of play. Yeah. Page 66. Yeah. Yeah. 66. Okay. So, no, so no, no difference there. Um, the, player, the caddy cannot replace the ball unless the caddy had lifted the ball or moved the ball. Uh, drop or place the ball in the relief area. That's still the, the player that needs to do that. And um, then decide to take relief under a rule of Gina saying, such as treating the ball as unplayable or taking relief from an abnormal course condition or penalty area. The caddy may advise the player to do so, but the player themselves must decide. Okay, and then 10.3C uh, is just saying that again, that the player is responsible for any actions that the caddy does, uh, both during the round while play is stopped, uh, but not before or after a round. And if the caddy's actions breaches a rule or would breach a rule if the action was taken by the player, the player gets the penalty under that rule. So the player, the player can't say to the caddy, 
go go break that branch that's in that's in my way. And because the player didn't do it, the player is still going to get the penalty even because the caddy did it in that case. And then this last part here, when the application rule depends on whether the player is aware of certain facts, the player's knowledge is treated as including whatever is known by his or her caddy. So hopefully you have a good caddy and a dumb one. Too. Dumb. <laughs> if I read that right. I know that. Right. So Sergeant Schultz. Sergeant Schultz. Remember him? Yep. I know I nothing. Know nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, rule, rule 11 here. All right, ball, ball in motion accidentally uh, hits a person, an animal, or object, and then deliberate actions to affect the ball in motion. So rule 11 covers what to do if the player's ball in motion hits a person, animal, equipment, or anything else in the course. When this happens accidentally, there is no penalty, and the player normally must accept the result, whether favorable or not, and play the ball from where it comes to rest. Rule 11 also restricts the player from deliberately taking actions to affect where any ball in motion might come to rest. And then this rule applies anytime a ball is in play. Uh, it, uh, anytime a ball in play is in motion, whether after a stroke or otherwise, except when a ball has been dropped in a relief area and has not yet come to rest. So that's going to be covered um, when we get to dropping under Rule 14.3. Yeah, this rule starts off so easy. <laughs> and then it gets complicated. If the ball is in motion, this rule applies. And the only thing they take out of it is when you're dropping in a relief area, which is when you wouldn't think about this rule anyway. Right, right. But now watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're talking about if it's, acci it's, it's accidental, ball in motion accidentally hits a person or an outside influence. So if it, if it, if it does want that, there's no penalty to any player. And this is true even if the player hits the ball, or the ball hits the player, the opponent, or any other player, or any other caddies in the foot. But to make the game more fair, you... Thank you. <laughs> does that, when it says any other player, does that, oh yeah, opponent, okay. Yeah, so any any player, or the, the opponent as well. So again, this is accidental, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna, um, there's gonna be no penalty, And then the only exception to that is that if the ball is on the putting green, if the ball, if the player's ball in motion hits another ball at rest in the putting green and both balls were on the putting green before the stroke, the player gets the general penalty, the two strokes. So that is the, still the same, whereas we have this one exception where both balls are on the green and one, and one player putts, whoever, whoever putts, and the hits the other ball, that player who putted the ball is going to get the penalty. I don't recall seeing that anywhere else. Where it says general penalty right behind it, parenthetical. Right. Strokes. Yeah. Probably probably a typo. Yeah. Or they, they didn't take it out, but no, I think they do it because the title is in stroke play only. Yeah. Oh, you're correct, yes. Correct. So they should have just said two penalty strokes instead of yep. general penalty. Yep. All right. Um, so outside influence. So the, the any the outside influence includes any of these people or things that can affect what happens to a player's ball or equipment. So any person, other, um, including another player, except the player or his or her caddy or the player's partner or opponent or any of their caddies. Any animal, any natural or artificial object or anything else, including another ball in motion, except for natural forces. So we're really talking about anything except natural forces or the player's side or their opponent in or their opponent's side in match play. All right. I think we well, we'll still watch this, so. Good, good humor. <clears throat> if it works, right. actually, actually, it will, without the video, it's just worthless. But I'll send it out. So uh, I'll. Oh. 
I'll s- yeah, I'll send it out later. Is it shooter? Email. It's shooter. Yeah. Yeah. We. we you know, we, we have, oh, I guess I'll just play it. Oh, just, just, uh, oh my god. Did you so, get the one in the bunker? No, it was no, the one no. where the guys on the Yeah, so we're just so, we're just playing the ball as it lies, so it's, it's gonna come to rest. Sir, you for it, for sure. And I will clarify that this is not this is not the correct rule. Oh, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you if you missed his shirt, it said gun, guns don't kill people, I kill yeah. people. Yeah. That's what his shirt said. And so he's that he's asking the official here for the ruling. I wish I could get off the He doesn't get a ruling, though. No, he gets the ruling, but it's the wrong one. <laughs> but yeah. it's the right one for the movie. Did it off the top? Well, that's because they previously told. Right, is it? Yeah, to play this right. Part. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's funny. I'll send it out. I, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> now the daddy and then wants to kill him. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're we're gonna mm-hmm. play the the ball must be played as it lies. So if, if these things happen, if it accidentally hits, um, it'll be talked about. If it accidentally hits the the uh, the player. Um, if it hits a lip and then comes back, hits a player, we're going to play the ball as it lies. There's going to be no penalty. Um, again, this is accidentally, except there's going to be two situations. So the first one is when a ball played from anywhere except the putting green comes to rest on any person. So in that case, on that play, on that spectator's shoe, an animal or moving outside influence, the player must not play the ball as it lies. Instead, the player must take relief. So anywhere except the putting green, the player is going to drop the uh, the the uh, drop the original or another ball in this in the relief area, which is going to be in that case if it's on it, going to be directly below the point where it was. So in that case, that's no, reference. no, that's the reference point. You actually get one club from that. On that's the new. Correct. Yeah, that's the correct. So yeah, so 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 the point for the reference. Yeah, so so right, you're you're right. So the the point underneath is going to be the reference point, and then for that place, you get the one club length, in mm-hmm. in either direction. One club length from that reference point, swiveled no closer to the hole, that half moon shape. That's one hundred eighty degrees. Yep. So the same the same thing could be could be the case if it's you know, the ball gets if it's in a uh, trash trash bin. We 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 know that the ball's in the in the trash bin. Uh, we, we are going to find that spot directly below where it's sitting above the ground. That's going to be a reference point. And then from that point, in one club length, in either direction, we get the drop. So any time now that we drop, and we'll get to this next week, at least start talking about dropping next week, is that we're going to have a reference point any time that we're dropping. So that's a little bit of a change. Well, it's, a, it's a lot of a change from, from previously. Um, so, so the choice in match play is gone. The choosy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> do know. <laughs> if, it, if your ball in motion was deflected by your opponent's oh, golf cart, you had a choice. Cancel the stroke. Or yeah. yeah. Well, yes, Gene, the choosy is gone. Right. Oh, that's so sad. This works as long as you don't get it over the parking lot. Right. So, so, so we talked about anywhere except uh, the putting green. Uh, the, the ball's on the putting green. We're going to place. We're going to place the ball. Instead of dropping it, we're going to place it. Okay. And then if we don't, in either in 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 either case, if we don't if we don't know um, where it was, we're going to estimate it to the best of our ability. And on the putting green, we'll place it on the estimated point. In the other situation. It's going to estimate a point is going to be our reference point, but we're still going to be dropping in that case. Okay, exception two is when the ball played from the putting green accidentally hits any person, animal, or movable obstruction, including another ball in motion. The stroke does not count, and the original ball or another ball must be replaced on its original spot, which, if not known, must be estimated. And again, in this case, it's we're on the putting green. So we're going to place the ball back in that in that spot. Okay, but except in these two cases. 
So except if a ball in motion hits another ball at rest or a ball marker on the putting green, uh, we just talked about that where that's going to be a two-stroke penalty and we're going to play the ball as it lies there. If it's another ball at rest, sorry, it's on the putting green. Just clarify that. So that's the ball at rest, the stroke play. It's so, ball only at rest and stroke play. And match play. Right. I believe it applies to match play. I think it applies to both, but there's no penalty in match play. Right, there's no penalty. No. Right, correct. Yeah, that's okay. So only in stroke play would they get that two stroke penalty. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. From my understanding. Okay, yeah. All right. Or um, a ball in motion accidentally hits a flag stick or a person attending a flag stick. And this is covered um, by 13.2b um, and not by this rule. <laughs> well, that's an odd one, isn't it? Because the person. You've got your caddy attending the flag stick, they pull it out, the ball hits the flag stick, it goes in the hole, the ball counts as hole. You play the ball from where it went. That's right. If it was accidental, you right. play the ball well, where it lies. That's a quiz right. question. Right. If the accident happens three times in the round, though, you got to start wondering. Right. It's getting good. But there might not be any caddy attending it. It's just in the hole. Well, that's well, that's true. Mayor got a hole in one one day doing that. Put another ball on the green and stuck it in the hole. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then this is just saying here that again, it's we're going to have this is this two two plus uh, one equals two situation where um, if we're playing an incorrectly substituted ball or playing from the wrong place, we're not going to get an additional. Um, penalty here just to all right so we just we just talked about accidentally so basically you know the the the, the majority of times if it's accidental we're just going to play it where it where it lies uh, with with a few exceptions um, now we're going to talk about when it's deliberately deflected or stopped so the question that that Jim, you brought up earlier about the video where the player um, is deliberately deflected or stopped by the player around the tree. So again, we have to have we have to be certain that it was deliberate that that the deflection actually wasn't intended by the player, um, and then that includes when it's touched while well, uh, touches the ball in motion, or if the ball in motion hits any equipment or other object, except a ball marker or another ball at rest before the ball was played. Um, <coughs> or otherwise went into motion, or any person, such as the player's caddy, that the player deliberately positioned or left in a particular location so that the equipment, object, or person might deflect or stop the ball in motion. So an example of this is that if, if I know I'm a bad bunker player and I put my bag to serve as a backstop, my intention is deliberate to put that bag there. But if I just put it there because it's close spot to the next hole, then it's not, that's not deliberate at that point. Let's go back to the example, though. I mean, that woman made two strokes. Stroke is forward movement of the club made to hit the ball. Mm -hmm. She did it once to get it up in the air, and then she. So she's made two strokes, hasn't she? Well, I think I think it's. it's I can see this too. No, I, I can see this too. Yeah. But the question is, how many? When she hits up wherever she's at, what does she lie? I think Tony, Tony, you had a good. You, you said you can't make a stroke at a, a ball. Stroke a moving ball. Right. Hit a motion, ball in motion. Right? Well, you can do it, but it's penalty. I've had a, I've had a player do this. You know, when they've missed a putt, bang, 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 bang. Each time they're hitting a moving ball. It's the same thing as that woman behind the tree. But the second stroke in that film, it was to deliberately change the direction of the ball. Right. In the ball. But it, what she to was get in it back into the fairway. But it was the forward movement in the club with the intention of hitting a ball. It was a stroke. So I, I think the question. So let me let me ask again. Are you saying that you should, in that case it's okay? Stroke one, this way. Stroke two, that way. Plus a penalty. Two strokes for hitting a moving ball. Yeah. I 
I, I think it maybe it, it ends up the same way. I don't but think she's so. lying, no. but she got to put the ball where it would have been had she not deflected. Right. Well, let, we'll let the strokes I, are the same. You're, you're saying three. You end up with the stroke you made plus two, right? No, no. I'm saying she's made. Let's start. Or you're let's do it Ginny's way. Make a T on the left side of the stroke she's made. She made two strokes. Then you I got the penalty strokes. She gets two penalty strokes for deliberately deflecting the ball. Where, where we come to a different result, I think, is that you would be right that this rule applies, so she's got to play her next shot from where the ball likely would have gone, mm -hmm. but for hitting it the second time. Right. So, I, so I think let's let's so that would be fun. let's get to that point, and, yeah. then, and 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 then we'll figure it out. I I, I think that will it, it's a good example to talk about and get through. Um, all right, so this is just saying that a uh, ball, a ball. There's there is an exception. You can deliberately deflect or stop a ball in match play when it's no reasonable chance that it can be hold. So I'm putting for to, to tie the match, and my ball rolls past the hole. Um, you know, Frank can go in there and, and, and hit it while it's moving because there's no chance that that, that I can actually make that shot. And same thing if it's if you're trying to concede a concede a stroke, but again, it's it, it has to be there has to be no reasonable chance that it can be holes. At that point, there's going to be no penalty if we deliberately deflect or stop the ball. Okay, and this is just saying that if we are talking about having a ball or a ball marker moved or lifted before a stroke is made, that's we're going to talk about that um, in 2020 when we get to Rule 15. It's a joke. Not a very good one, but. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so when the penalty applies to players, the player's going to get the general penalty, so loss of or two strokes if he or she deliberately deflects or stops any ball in motion. So I think we can all agree that in this example that we're going to be talking about, the player is deliberately deflecting the ball. Okay, and then this is true whether it's, a, it's, the, it's the player's own ball or a player or a ball played by an opponent or by another player in stroke play. With the exception, if the ball's moving in water, there's no penalty. We talked about that that early earlier. Okay, so if it's known or virtually certain that the player's ball was deliberately deflected or stopped, um, it must not be played as it lies. Instead, the player must take relief. So stroke made from anywhere except the putting green, which is in the video, which is where we're at. The player must take relief based on the estimated spot where the ball would have come to rest if not deflected or stopped. So as Tony was saying in that video, we'd have to we'd have to figure out where that ball would have came to rest after the stroke was made. Now I think what we need to clarify about the question is that I I don't think that that second action is a stroke. I think the only stroke that counts is that first shot, and then she's deliberately deflecting the ball towards the hole. I can I see think, it either way. I, th I think it's a stroke, and I think the number of penalties, whether you give her two because she hit a moving ball or if you give her two because she deflected the ball, it's one or the other. I think the difference the is that she's going to be playing her next stroke from nearby the tree rather than where her baseball swing put it. Well, if you if you think the baseball swing is a stroke, wouldn't wouldn't you be playing it from where that stroke ends up? Because no, that's because that's what this would, rule is I would, but for this rule, if if you were playing it as two strokes, you'd have counted two strokes, and she'd play it where the second one winds up, and then she'd get two more for right. playing a moving ball. What is that? Ten. Yeah, yeah. Ten one. D. Ten one. Yeah. So but, it's four total. Right. So she's lying five up the fairway. She had, it had to be a, she's like line five, but, but this is makes a difference if it, if you interpret it this yeah, way. Yeah, this could be a hundred and fifty yard or two hundred yard difference. This is near the tree. Yeah, I the mean, other the one, assumption that it was deliberately reflected. <laughs> the ball was the tree, so it the Ooh, you don't want him as <laughs> well, I, th I, th I think it, I mean, it, it all comes down to what, whether we consider that second def deflection or stroke, it, it, is it a deflection or is it a stroke? I think it's a, I think it's a deflection. I don't think it's a stroke. It's a deflection if it's done with the hand. No. Or the shoulder. Yeah, it could be any, anything. Kyle. Yes. Hey, this is Dan. 
What, what if, why don't we talk about what Phil Mickelson did on putting green where he deliberately stopped the ball? That's more realistic. What did he say? Talk about what, what, what Phil did at Shinnecock last year. Okay. So in that case, Phil, Phil stopped, stopped the ball from rolling down the hill, right? Sure. Right. So in, in that case. That's different, completely different. It's, 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 a, it's, it's different. But in that case, um, we're going to, according to what this rule is saying, we're going to estimate. Well, see, that one was on the putting green, so we'll, we'll, wow, okay. we'll a little bit different for there. Um, got it. Is the forward yeah. movement of the club made the strike for ball? Oh, how does she miss that definition? Yeah. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. I don't know. My recommendation is we send the video to the USGA and ask them for the rule. Okay. Okay. Good. That's that's a good idea. So yeah, this 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 used to be under exerting influence. It was one dash two or something right. like right. that. That was when you stop a ball from rolling down a hill by putting your club out. But that is not a stroke. This she actually makes a stroke at it. Yeah, she actually swung at the ball. She's trying to hit. The ball. She she hit with the club then. Mm -hmm. I'm, well, I'm assuming she did a little bit. I yes. Video. Yes. Oh, yeah. right. Well, I sent it to you. Do you yeah. have it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she struck it with the club head. So, so well, I think I think John's John's recommendation is good because I I don't think we're going to come to a decision here about whether it was a stroke or not. Um, we'll, we'll have to get an interpretation from someone about what it is. Um, so, okay. So we're in in this case. Let's just assume that that next that thing was not a stroke. Um, and so now we're going to estimate where that first, if you've seen the video, the chip, the chip beyond the tree, where it would come to rest. And then we're going to have where we think it is. Again, we're talking about anytime we drop the ball, we're going to have a relief area. So we're going to estimate that spot. That's going to be our reference point. And then we're going to get one club length in either direction, but it can't be, uh, it has to be in the same area of the course and it can't be closer to the hole. So in this case, let's just say that the, it was a, it, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, let, let's just say that for argument purposes and moving forward, that it's not, that we're just calling it a deflection and not a stroke. And so even though she wrapped it around the tree, she's going to have to, she's going to have to pick the spot where we think it would have come to rest. And that's going to be a reference point. And then one club length in the direction, we're going to drop there and then, and then play on with the two stroke penalty. On the record. The more I think about it, the more I think it was a stroke and it was not a deflection. Sure. She made the forward movement of the club with intent to hit the ball. That's a stroke. That's not putting your elbow in the way of it. And so I'll bet, well, have some. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So if, if the ball would have come to rest on the putting green, uh, the player is going to place the ball on the green. So the only difference there is that if, it, if, if the ball would come to rest off the green, we're not placing, we're, we're dropping, and then on the green, we're still going to estimate the spot, but we're going to place it if it's on, if it's on the green. If, if it would have come to rest on the green. Then if it would have come to rest out of bounds, then we're going to assume that it was out of bounds and the player has to go back to where they last played from. So a, a good example of that is that a player and their parent is out um, near, near an out of bounds fence and they hit it left and it's going LB and the player the, the, the parent goes and grabs it before it goes out of bounds and knocks it, and so it's in bounds. We're going to make the assumption that the ball would have went out of bounds. The player, the parent didn't deliberately stop the ball. The player has to go back and play from where they last played from. All right, so now we've got Phil Mickelson's situation, uh, Dan. So stroke made from the putting green. So in this case here, um, the stroke does not count, and the original ball or another ball must be replaced on its original spot. But we're going to have a we're going to have a penalty here, so it would have been more it would it would have been smarter for Phil just to take an unplayable in that case, and he would have had to go back to the same spot, but only would have got one stroke penalty because we're going to get a general penalty um, for this. I'm not familiar with Phil Mickelson's thing. What did he do? The U.S. Open. So, mm -hmm. last, yeah, last year he he it was uh, he hit it. And he then putted. He putted, and I was the green, and then it was going to run off the green. But before he did, he just went up and and just 
hit it. And you knew he was going to yeah, get a stroke penalty. Because it was like the third time. It was like off and on the green a couple of times. And because the, the condition of the greens were unputtable, basically, um, for stopping a ball. And he was making a point. Did, did he? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. The look on his face didn't look like he was making a point. Oh, I right. thought I did. Frustration. He looked like he was pissed. That, did he hold out? Of it makes it worse. <laughs> did he hold out or not hold on? I'm sure yes. he did. Yes, yes, he did. He wasn't he detailed. Was, they had to, the slugger had to determine exactly what the stroke count was going to be after his action. They count all I can go back and estimate where his ball would no. have gone, but for him, no. no. I think he should have been DQ. A, a lot of people thought that. Yeah. People do too. Right. <laughs> the whole point is to compare apples to apples and scores, and, and you know, if the ball is four inches from the cup and you don't put it out, you're DQ. Because you don't have a score that compares to others, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with you. I think a lot of people thought that as well. But you know, Phil, Phil brings in I fans, so was, uh, is is what it is. There's it. there's other things to worry about, I guess. Um, all right. So uh, deliberately moving objects or altering conditions to affect the ball in motion. So when a ball is in motion, a player must not deliberately take any of these actions to affect where that ball. Um, whether the player's own ball or another player's ball might come to rest. So you can't alter physical conditions by taking any of the actions um, listed in Rule 8.1, such as replacing a divot or pressing down a raised area of turf. So this was this was the old um, video where, where we had uh, Camilo Viegas. The ball w went up the hill, came back down, and as he did it, he tapped on his divot or, or raised piece of turf so that if it didn't go into that spot, he would have a better lie. That's still going to be a penalty. We still can't deliberately do that. But if he didn't know that the ball was coming down and he tapped down his divot, he'd, he'd be okay. But it because that was just accidental. But if it's deliberate, we we got an issue. And then again, the player um, is not going to be able to lift or move a loose impediment or a movable obstruction. Exception that uh, talk about a flag stick or a ball at rest in a putting green or another player's equipment. Um, so if you see that the ball is going um, and the flag stick's laying on the ground, the player can go and remove that flag stick and, the, and, the, and they're all right. And then same thing if there's another ball at rest in the putting green, if there's another ball that's heading at it, the player can go up there and mark that ball and get it out of the way before it, it hits. And then same thing with, the, with another player's equipment. Um, is that if you see your, it could run into someone's bag, the player can go up there, or someone can go up there and move the um, player's bag out of the way so that it doesn't de deflect it. Or sweater, or hat, or right, any 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 carry. equipment. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a video they show at rule school. A player hits a ball out of a bunker. And it goes up on the hill and starts rolling down. He sees the rake that he has thrown there. He jumps out of the bunker and lifts the rake, two strokes, and the ball rolls into the hazard. Yeah. One more. Yeah, so that yes. was Corey Pavin. Was it Corey um, Pavin? One okay. of the majors. And so, yeah, his caddy, not, not only did his caddy got a penalty for moving the rake, but he also, if he would have left the rake there, it wouldn't have went in the water. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, so yeah, so I, I think he fired the caddy after that. So. <laughs> he got three instead right. of zero. Right, exactly. Yeah, that, that is a good video. Um, all right, bunkers, let's get, to, we only got a few minutes, but let's get at least get through the first part of bunkers here. So uh, bunker, we now have our own rule for bunkers, which I know Gene's been, been lobbying for for years. Um, so now we've got everything under one rule, 12. And again, bunkers are specifically prepared areas and, and, and tested, intended to test the player's ability to play from the sand. To make sure the player confronts this challenge, there are some restrictions on touching the sand before the stroke is made and on, and on where relief may be taken for a ball in a bunker. So this picture here, diagram 12.1, is a good 
example of when a ball is in a bunker, when it's not in a bunker. So everything in this picture is the same as it always has been, with the exception of this one ball that's in the in our stack lip or face of the bunker here. So that top one, the one highest up. So that previously that ball was in the bunker. Now that wall or face is not part of the bunker. And so what that what that means, and we talked about this when we had some discussions um, back when about well, what happens if my ball is embedded in that area? Okay, so now that's not part of the of the bunker. And so when we take our embedded ball relief, we have to take embedded ball relief in the general area, not necessarily in the bunker. And so I believe Mike Church asked the question way back when was, well, what happens when I take my embedded ball relief, which now is gonna be, your reference point is gonna be directly behind where it's embedded, one club length in either direction in which to drop. And so in this case, if that one club blank doesn't get us out of the bunker and the only place that the one club blank could be is on the side of the hill and we can't get it to stand there, then we have to take an unplayable. And that was one of the interpretations that came out from the USGA in December. And if it wasn't embedded and you wanted to take relief and the one club blank got you out of the bunker, you could because technically it's not in the bunker. Correct. Yeah, and so what they what they thought was that a lot of times that one club length is going to get you out of the bunker, um, especially if it's very very close to the lip, and as long as it's you know the geometry works for you, right. not going yeah, closer to the hole, then you'll be fine. And the the other the other thing to to think about too with this rule is not necessarily think about the lip at the front of the bunker, but also on the backs of the bunker. And so previously, if your ball was up against the back and you took your backswing and you hit that earth and lip, that was a two-stroke penalty. Now, if you hit on the backswing that, that wall or that face that's not covered in sand, there's no, there's no penalty there. So as long as that's not sandy, it's Correct. Not part of the bunker. Correct, and, that, and that's a common question that, that we get is that, you know, we're, we're assuming that this is earth and wall, not, not just a, a lip of the bunker that's covered with sand, that's still part of the bunker. Right. So it's only if it's, like, imagine like a St. Andrews type bunker or you have the, the, the uh, stacked turf. Or sometimes, face of a too, sometimes right? the face of a bunker is just, it's like even almost like a little cliff, and underneath is just dirt, not sand. So that would count too, right? Yeah, so so I think what, yeah, so what you guys are saying is that there could be like a, you know, three or four or five inch area that's just dirt, right? that's not sand, that 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 is not part of the bunker. Yeah, okay. yeah. so as long as it's not covered in sand or should be covered in sand, or as, usual, as normally covered in sand, I think is the term, mm -hmm. then it's right. not part of the bunker. So if the ball was embedded, you could get in that three inches or four inches of flat face. Right. If it's embedded in there, you can get through the green relief. Correct. Only, with All, only it's one, within one, one club. One club link. Link. Yeah. Right. The one club link. Okay. I think I'm buying myself a longer driver. <laughs> <laughs> it can only be so long. <laughs> I know. All right. So um, when when a ball is is in the bunker, so it, it a ball is in a bunker when it touches the sand on the ground inside the edge of the bunker, or is inside the edge of the bunker and rests on the ground where sand normally would be. Um, it could be a place where sand was blown or washed away. That's still going to be part of the bunker or it is in or on a loose impediment or a movable obstruction. So we think about back to that picture, that ball that was on the rake. Um, even though this, there was sand underneath the rake, so that ball is still part, that's still in the bunker. Uh, but um, if a ball lies on soil or grass or other growing or attached natural objects inside the edge of the bunker without touching any sand, the ball is not in the bunker. And so that was the one with the, with the, the green patch of grass in the middle there. It's like the ball landing on it. Uh, no, it's that would be a loose impediment. So that would still be part. That would still be in the bunker. So it has to be fixed and growing. Now you remove it and drop it in position. You 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 would you would in that case you would have so I'm just trying to think, it's not touching the ground. You would you would have your reference point would be the Point directly underneath, one club length, and then drop in that yeah. situation. Yeah. It's like that long grass that grows in bunkers, that yeah. love grass. I'm sorry. Real Wait, tall, long sure grass that. that grows in bunkers and the ball's up in the grass. But, That's but, not in the bunker. Right. True. 
but the, no, there's I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to clarify that because I don't think it's. I think there's a there's an interpretation or whatever because 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 what's the ruling if it's on the rake? If it's on if it's on the rake, not we'll touching we'll the sink. Right, we'll but it's the same same difference. I, I think. So, it, so you're saying the, the, the ball lands in the bunker on top of a divot. You think it's free relief? So now it's that that divot has become a loose impediment inside the bunker. Yeah. And the ball's lying on the loose. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So sure. now you have to take the reference point below the loose impediment. Right. Well, no, no. I no, think, you I, I think you're right. So I, so I was going yeah, off the right. Yeah. Well, well, wait, wait a minute. How could you move oh. a loose impediment the ball is sitting on? Right. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. So. I think I'd rather hit the ball off the loose. Yeah. So in that case, in that case, that divot is our loose impediment, and we can move loose impediments from bunkers. But if they cause our ball to move, we're going to get a penalty. So it's 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 not relief. Uh, I I got that confused with removal of structure. Um, or like a piece of paper or something right. like that. So you right play it or it's unplayable. So yeah, you play it or it's unplayable. Right. Okay. In that case. Well, that giant standing in the bunker. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's it's it's three o'clock. So uh, we got we got at least to that first part of the bunker. So the next uh, next week we're gonna finish up twelve. Go through 13 really quick, and we're, we're definitely going to get into 14 because we're going to spend a lot of time on 14 because I think that is the, the, the biggest fundamental change that's happening, the one that we're going to interact with the most of out there when we're dealing with players. And they, and they have made dropping a lot easier, but it, we, we do need to understand this concept of the relief area and how that works. So, all right, appreciate it. Thanks, thanks everyone. I'm just calling you. The mm -hmm. out almost, you. almost yeah. off. I think I didn't